guys, how's it going? We are in a very different setting today. I thought it would be fun to start off by walking you through our new warehouse space. I'm standing up here in the conference room right now and you can look out these windows. You can see all of the pallet racking, all of the stuff the kids are currently running around. Look at this. It's just wild to me that we are actually in this space. In fact, we were moving into this warehouse the same exact time the dream stream was going on. So there was a lot of activity. There was a team of people moving stuff in down here so that we didn't even have to really be down here. They took care of all of it so that we could focus on what we were doing up at the house. But it's just been a super exciting time. And we did show you our first warehouse. I think it was earlier this spring when the kneeling pads first came in. And we were so grateful to have the space because you know, Ken, who is our former editor, he is the one who has spearheaded this entire thing. He manages and operates the whole uh, store, warehouse, and he did it out of his garage for a really long time before we started to feel like we need more space, we need to expand what we're doing here. And at the time that we moved into the first warehouse, it was the only warehouse available. So we just took what we could get and we were thankful for it. But when this one became available, it's set up so much more efficiently to get things done quicker. It's easier on everybody that works here and it gives us room to expand as well. In fact, you will notice a lot of our pallet racking doesn't even have stuff on them yet. We are gonna be working on building up our inventory over the course of this winter and we're just kind of plugging away at it slowly. I think, I feel like it's kind of fast, but I feel like we're kind of just going at it at a pace where we can handle it because we are funding it ourselves. Well, actually you guys are funding it essentially. I mean, by supporting our store, you're making it to where we can have one here. So thank you so much for supporting our store and a huge thank you to the team down here, Ken and Jesus and, and team who have made this whole thing possible. So now I'm gonna walk you down the stairs and around. Okay, here we go. Oh, you know what? Maybe before we leave this room, this is the conference room. Aaron, Ken, and a few other guys had a meeting in here this morning, actually. Kind of nice to have that space. But here's a look down the first part of the warehouse. Those are all kneeling pads right there. Head down the stairs, there's a little office right here. And then you'll notice a big platform right here, right through the center, kind of. This is where they used to build trusses, right? Yeah, this was, yeah, they were doing trusses in this warehouse before. Formerly a truss warehouse. We looked at uh, possibly like, jackhammering this out. Oh. It, I think the expense just wouldn't make sense. No, and I think that they figured out ways to make it work. Yeah. So really quick, let me just show you down these aisles. You can see product down here. I think all the, we've got Felco stuff and there's chelated iron, got a whole bunch of that in stock. My section. Yeah, Aaron's section. And it looks like there's Dram products and DeWitt products. There's Gilmore. Oh, see, there's the watering cans right here. My favorite size, I love this color. I didn't realize we had that color in stock. Espoma, Bonide products, and what have we got over here? Oh, kneeling pads. Yeah. Uh, more kneeling pads. Those are kneeling pads over there, right? Well, I think that they're just kind of everywhere. Okay, and then there's like ship, shipping materials and all that kind of stuff. There's merch back here. My goodness. And then we've got room to grow right over here, which is so, so great. Okay, where's Ken? Hey, Ken. How does the warehouse work? Oh, hey, Seamless. this is Ken. Ken is, this, <laughs> is the warehouse and store manager, operator. What is your title exactly? Uh, Grand Vizier. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Can you walk us through? Sure, like from when an order comes in? Yeah, thing? yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, we can do that. So what happens is magical. I'm not sure if we have any empty picking carts at the moment. We have a little bit of a backlog of orders here. I see that. But, uh, we, were, we were waiting on the correct box size mm. and the truck was a little later than we had anticipated. But, the, but it's here now and the boxes are here, so we're gonna get them packed up. Awesome. Um, but uh, this is what basically our picking sessions look like. We start it and then it just tells you what to pick gives you a picture of it and everything and then oh, you get nice. your little trusty magic ring here so what does that magic ring do i think it that's so scans, cool it scans the upcs on there so okay it the barcodes uh -huh. and it just takes you through you know we're in section a shelf one oh. right here and you just oh take it out. i don't have a cart with me sure but you would just scan this uh -huh. and then it takes you on to the next one it takes you all the way through and then you wind up over there at the packing station. Okay, so this is where you start then. Mm -hmm. And you've got kind of a process to walk through the whole thing. Yep. What's that thing called? Where the those, conveyor the belt. The conveyor belt. Yeah, it's new. We're, we're just kind of experimenting with it to see if it 
actually helpful, but we got a great price. Yeah, you did. Hey, I'm Benjamin, glad you snagged it. Show us how the conveyor belt works. There's Jesus and Taylor and Jordan working hard. We're bringing it up. Okay. Here's a starter. Okay. Just push it. Just one push, huh? Yeah, and then it goes down here. Oh my goodness. It just keeps on going. You don't even have to touch it. It does it on its own. See? It yep. keeps on going. Go, go down. All the way to the end? Yep. Oh my goodness. Boom. Have you done all these boxes? Nope. No. This right here is how the pyramids were built. <laughs> yeah. Conveyor yeah. system. So you can see they've picked a bunch of orders that are on these rolly carts right here. In fact, that's kind of what they do, right? They take a rolly cart around and put the orders on the cart. No? Janie? In Texas. Nice. <laughs> Doug and Janice. Anyway, they take the carts around and they've got everything so organized. Like I don't even know their whole system down here. And the fun thing to see is like Ken has tried out so many different systems and processes that try to refine it and make it as efficient and easy as possible to where we don't, you know, have mistakes. I mean, everybody's gonna have a mistake here and there, but to minimize that amount is just amazing. And to have that sort of brain, oh, it's awesome. Oh. So got some shears and some loppers oh. and some scissors. Look at that. Okay. I bet I bet you those are sharp. I bet they are. Yeah. We also have some hand oh, tools. Oh, very nice. So some forks and this thing. Uh, cultivator. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't think of that word. <laughs> uh, there's, uh, there's, they have this like, it's almost like a hori hori knife trowel thing. Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that's called. It's very exciting. That is. Also, they, I mean, it's on brand for them to be red, but it's, Kind of nice to be able to spot these out in the garden. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some spray. Yeah. I need to be getting after mine and start uh, cleaning up all of our pruners. I use this one a lot. This is such a long... I mean, Wait, could... no, is it this one I use a lot? Is there a 630 and then there's... I think it might... That looks like the one I use. I use this for uh, getting plants out of containers. I saw the soil. Oh, yeah, yeah. I also saw a kind of squash in half. Oh in order to cook them cool. <laughs> with this. Oh, the folding one's very nice. I actually prefer these Do to you? that one because the you can put the blade away. With that one, the only way to put the blade away is to put the sheath, the sheath back on. Yeah. But the sheath ends up on the ground. I guess. So you have to like go get it, whereas sure. the sheath kind of like stays with this one. So I do prefer that. This one's less physical though. You have a longer blade. You get more action out of one pole. Yeah, than you do with a shorter blade. I'd be doing like pretty big branches with the big one. I mean, you know, to each their own, right? Sometimes you got a big branch or a big squash to we cut open. We have some open. bigger folding ones too. Oh, so. you do. What is that? 603 curved blade. Nice. And a closer look at the merch shelf over here. These are new. We've got pink shirts. That's a pink V-neck right there. Oh, this has Pam written all over that it. That does have Pam written all over it. Yes. And we've got zip up sweatshirts coming, right? Yeah, I think so. There's a bunch of things that are kind of on the way. We just placed an order with Aquascape. Yes. So we get a bunch of stuff uh -huh. from them, which will be good. All the Koi Crunchies. Yes, we go through like a that. lot of those. Um, yeah, so there'll be a bunch of, we'll add a bunch of stuff. Cool. One more yep. Also, Ken was just showing me this. I did not realize that this was a thing. It's a thing. I'm supposed to show them. Yes. <laughs> so this is a hose and sprayer, right? You hook the hose to this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this is and then a. It goes into this hopper like that, and you put your concentrate in here. Um, but this is from Bonide, and if you have one of their um, like concentrates, then there's inside here it's threaded so that you can just thread it directly onto oh. this, and then you know you set your settings here to sure. meter out whatever you need uh -huh. and then when you're done you just take it off rinse that off and then put the lid back on and you don't have to like pour anything back into containers and no cleaning the hopper out between yeah. that that is so awesome i didn't even realize that was a thing yeah it's pretty cool yeah mix and spray those spray how far like 30 feet i don't know i think it probably there? depends on your it doesn't say i thought i how read much? it how much are these do we know? I don't know. Is it, is it on the Gar website? Guardanswer.com. It's on the website. Yeah, guardanswer.com. <laughs> Ken, how is this uh, compared to the last warehouse? It's so much better. Yeah. Really? It's so much better. Yeah. I, I feel like we're still kind of getting acclimated. Mm -hmm. And we're, you know, 
just figuring out how to use it. The sure. Best. Yeah. Uh, but so far, it's just been so much smoother. And it's nice to have some elbow room. And it's nice when we have a lot of outgoing. Mm -hmm. In the old building, it was like, if we had like four or five pallets that were like stacked up with boxes that were going out, it was just like, you know, you're kind of like, yeah, yeah sure. trying, to, just mm -hmm. trying to move around them. But, uh, but now we've got plenty of space for that. And um, I think the UPS guy likes it a lot better. Yeah. yeah. Than having to go to the front door and then come to the back yeah. door. Yeah. So, yeah. Like that's, that's cool. one of the major things, right? Is having everything in one space. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the last warehouse, well, in from the video. Right. We had to go back. Separated between the two mm -hmm. areas. And what is going on over here? I was seeing uh, Jordan was closing up some bags oh, yeah. and stuff so, over here. I mean, we, we ship a lot of liquid stuff and lotions and things like that. Uh -huh. Also things like, you know, stump and vine killer and oh, sucker yes. punch and all those. I actually need to get some of that while I'm down here. All right. Yes. Well, <laughs> see if we can get you a discount. Okay. Um, awesome. So anyway, so we, we impulse seal all of these things um, and just close them up so that if there is any leakage uh, in, you know, transit, mm -hmm. um, there's no damage to other uh, products in the order. Can you show me how it works? Uh, sure. Close up. This is riveting stuff. Oh wait, does it, uh, so, oh, it heats it. <laughs> yeah, it heats it up. Just melts the... Just melts the... So you just put it right here. Turn it pricks and then tear off the backside. And oh. you have this beautifully... Mine's not very good, but it's in theory supposed to look like this. <laughs> nice. Okay. Very professional. Yeah, we'll uh, redo that one. <laughs> okay. And then this is a little whatever. What are those called? I, we, I don't even know what they're called. We just call them bubbles. Bubbles. Yeah, that's good. I was going to say cushion balls, but that doesn't sound good. Yeah. yeah. Cushiony, Cushiony things. things. Did you show the office space yet? I have not shown the office space. Oh. Should we run up there? Yeah, should go look at it. This area has a scale and printers. There's a couple fans sitting there. Some fly swatters. That's important stuff. Yeah, you got to have them. This is the front office. Yeah. So Hello. I think it's Ken's desk, Taylor's desk, and... Jesus's yeah, desk. we need to work on getting some more furniture in here for him. Yeah. There's a little break table right in here. Kitchen. Very nice. There it is. So if you want to come work at Garden Answer. <laughs> it's super aesthetic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at this. We got this actually a long time ago. Well, yeah, March. March, March 6th. 6th of 2024. We reached 10,000 10, orders. orders. That's amazing. Through Shopify. And this right here is Ken's wife, Natalie, who helps us out a tremendous amount too. Natalie picks all the questions for our recap videos on Wednesdays. She also deals with... Um, Ken? <laughs> he said it, not me. <laughs> um, she also does like gathers numbers for us. And she also like, if you guys send stuff out, she's usually the one that picks, she picks it up and yeah, kind right. of handles all of that. So it's just really nice to have her on board too. Yeah. As much as she is. I'm so much happier with this warehouse versus the last one. Oh yeah, big time. It just, it feels more, well, it was so convenient. I don't know how much you mentioned, but it's the same owner. Same oh, owner as the last one. Uh -huh. And so like, we weren't even in the last one a full year. Mm -hmm. um, so we hadn't, like we had a contract, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever you call it. Was it that. a year long lease? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Um, and we could have fulfilled that if we needed to, but he was like, you guys are such great tenants that I'm happy just to like move you into this next place and mm -hmm. and I'll just rent out the other one. So it, yeah. Really nice. Worked out really well. Also, there's a ton more area for trucks and cars and all of that. There's like a huge empty lot next to us. Is that like connected to this space? Yeah, um, the lot line goes quite a ways. So there's a lot yeah, of room Yeah, it goes out there. like, there's another warehouse beyond. I'm gonna run outside just real quick so you can see the lot. So just out here, I wanted to show you how much room there is. Like there's just a tremendous amount of room which uh, like Ken was mentioning, delivery trucks and things like that, it's just so much easier because they've got two huge doors. Um, yeah. It was, it was a little tight, the last place. Yeah. And you guys, that is the warehouse. Isn't this so much fun? I can't even believe it. And we will bring you back down when we start to fill up a little bit more. Uh, like I said, we're gonna be working over the course of these next several months uh, to be ready for a really busy spring season, hopefully. And we've got some fun things in the work to, works to add into the store. So it's just a really crazy, exciting time for us. We're just so thankful. So now we're gonna head back home and plant a couple trees. All right, guys, we are back home, ready to plant the last two cedars. We've got one more. Sorry, I probably should have waited till the tractor was gone for noise. 
but we've got one more electric blue cedar and one more of the blue angel weeping cedar. They're both gorgeous and they're gonna both go out here in the dirt lands. I just drove around the South Garden just to make sure that there wasn't another spot to pop one of those, but I don't know. We're getting pretty full, with, at least with things that are gonna mature a lot bigger. And so I need to always remember that and not get things too crowded in. Like sh small shrubs and perennials are easy to move around when things get bigger. Big stuff, not as easy to move. So I try to make sure that there's plenty of room. Aaron's attaching the 36 inch auger right now. I think we're gonna try just digging the holes first before we grab the trees. Usually I like to place things and look at it first. There's one spot up in the entryway that I'm gonna go look at it one more time to see if I like it for one of the cedars. It was fun taking you guys down to the warehouse, though. I hope you enjoyed seeing that. Just feels like such an exciting like, new venture still. <laughs> There's the kids. Benjamin loves to run, always running. There's Samantha on the lawn tractor. <sighs> I don't know, I was kind of thinking it might be pretty to have one of them right up here. Okay, so making a little spot here. That big, tall cedar might be beautiful right in here. I don't know. While we're up here, I can show you these two posts. We are putting in a gate. So they set these posts the Monday after the Dreamstream actually, and then they had to wait till the concrete like fully cured before hanging the gate because the gate's so darn heavy. And then after that, we're gonna assess how um, tall and how big we want the brick pillars to be, and then there'll be lights and all of that, and some fun planting areas in front. I think having that will make it look like such a fun, like formal entrance. Yeah, it'll give me more motivation, I think, to plant around it and sort of finish up the space. <laughs> Aaron's shaking his head no. Not right here. No because of future plans. Yeah. One, one, there's water near there somewhere. Oh, is there? And two, I think we need to get the gate in first. You're probably right. And just determine like this is what we want to do with the entrance. All right, we're going to head to the other side of the dirt lands to tuck these in. It's kind of what I figured anyway. Oh, oh pff, of course. Whoa. Okay, so now he's gonna go put the pinchers on. We're gonna grab the trees and get them in the ground. We got both of the cedars in and I love where they both ended up. First one is along the back side of the property. We just recently planted the Vanderwolf right here. There's also some spring grove arborvitas and a linden. 
and then to the left there's another linden and a view from behind just for perspective on you know where the house is and all these other beautiful things. Now we planted another one of this variety on the berm behind the barn just recently and I'll have to watch that video back to uh, remember what I said in terms of how big it gets but I want to say that I said it was going to stay a lot smaller than it might get. <laughs> I think I thought it was like a 15 by eight or something like that like one of those smaller type but now i'm seeing information that they get like 20 by 20 or 30 by 30 i think that they do grow very very slowly and in our area to get this type of cedar to even thrive can be a bit tricky so we'll see what happens usually they just kind of are a, a little bit of an accent evergreen for us so in the end it may stay on the smaller side anyway but they're a zone six through nine uh, and they're such a pretty texture i just love the little plumes of needles and they're relatively soft and this one's kind of a bicolor blue green so I'm wondering if now that it will be you know, in the ground and hopefully it'll like the spot, maybe it will get a little bit more blue. I see some pictures where they're just really, really vibrant. Either way, I don't care. I think it's a beautiful tree. I like the structure of it quite a lot. And the other one is over there. Look at that. Oh, it's so gorgeous. So from this angle, you can see we tucked it in between a couple of Norway spruce trees, but this one doesn't get very wide, like um, 15, I think, feet wide. And it will touch with that other Norway over there, but that's okay. We want it to be really thick. I know we just talked about how I like to plant things to where they have space to grow, but in a case where I want it to be a thicker block of a hedge, we will plant things closer. And I think this is just such a beautiful structure right here. I love the height. I love the openness of the branches. It's just gorgeous. So 25 by 15. Let's take a look from this side. You can see right there already a little bit of a block. And you know, we've got more areas right back in here. We've got a locust tree that will get quite large. And then, you know, we'll probably fill in with some smaller things back behind the fence there. But it is fun to see something this tall go in. Oh, it's just so impactful. And this is where we just recently planted one of the Centara Double Blue Lilacs. I just think the mix over here is just so beautiful. You know, the Norways, and then we've got Spring Grove Arborvitas. There's a purple crab apple, a birch tree. You can see the Sensation Box cell there in beautiful color. There's a, uh, pines and junipers and blue spruce and more crab apples. There's a Katsura tree back there that will be bright orange here shortly. It's just going to be a gorgeous mixed hedge. And you guys, that is going to be it for today's projects. Two more trees in the ground just plugging away at that rack full of trees. We don't have that many. All we have left in the cut flower garden. Let's see, two quadrants are completely empty. The annual quadrant and then the rose garden, 100% empty. And then the perennial quadrant, almost empty. I just have a couple of things to dig. And then the dahlia quadrant, we still have the status up, which I wanted to harvest that so we could dry it. And then the dahlias themselves, which we do have a killing frost here and a couple of, I want to say two or three nights, but I think we're going to take after it tomorrow and get all of them except for 11 clumps. I marked 11 that I want to save, which is so awesome. <laughs> 11 is so easy compared to however many we have dug and stored in the past, but the rest of them we're just going to cut down and just whatever comes back next year, whatever overwinters, we'll dig and move somewhere else, but everything else we're just going to kind of treat as an annual and let it go because I am kind of done with those types of projects like the dahlias that just got a little bit too much. We planted really, I don't want to say too many because can you have too many flowers? But in this case, that it was just kind of a burden, the whole project was. It was a burden not only on me, but for everybody else who's helping out and nobody liked doing that project. <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna abandon that and do things a little bit differently. And I think it's good to adjust as you go, uh, go along and figure things out a little bit more, but anyway. That's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the warehouse tour. It was fun for me actually to go down there because I hadn't even seen that little um, conveyor belt thing that was new since I'd been down there the last time. And then we'll uh, take you down there periodically as things kind of amp up. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.